Is everything in landscape photography expensive? Well, everything I'm going to show you in this video costs exactly Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about planning and specifically about the tools, the apps, the websites that I use to help plan my landscape photography. Planning is really important. You've got to know where you're going and you've got to know when is the right time to go there. And for that, there are a number of tools, uh, apps and websites that I use. But what I thought I'd do was I'm going to restrict this. So the only websites and apps that I'm going to show you are ones that are free. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Where do we start? Well, quite often my planning for landscape photography starts with a very simple tool which is available as both an app and accessible through a web browser and I'm going to show you the web browser version and it is Google Maps. Okay I'm assuming most people are familiar with Google Maps to some degree but we can you know just go and type in a location somewhere and we get a map. Useful. Of course we've also got the satellite view and that means we can actually see what things really look like. We can zoom in and look in more detail. If we want to we can take this little figure here and move it onto well any road or street that has a blue line on it. Drop it on and we can actually get a real view of what that scene looks like. There are also, if we take this little uh, figure again, there's these little blue circles and if we drop onto that then we get other views. Some of them are 360 views and some of them are just images. So again we've got an opportunity to see what the scene actually looks like. Some of you may recognise that lighthouse from some of my previous videos. Something else that we can do here, if we're not sure of what's around in a general area, if we widen our view a bit and actually clear the search result there, and then click on these little arrows down here in the right corner to show imagery, we can actually get pictures of what's around. Some of these are just photos, some of them are street views, and it even gives us little arrows that shows us where that picture has been taken. Just a word of caution though, sometimes the location shown by those arrows is not 100% accurate. So if we're not sure where to go, well, this is a good way to find possible locations. So Google Maps is a really powerful tool for that initial search for places to photograph and I use it a lot but we've still got to decide when's the best time to go and one of the big factors is weather now if you've watched my videos you'll know that I'm often frustrated by the accuracy of weather forecasting particularly when it comes to cloud cover uh, in, in Spain or certainly in this part of Spain um, and I use a number of apps and websites to check that uh, some of them are only applicable to this area or to Spain, so I'm not including those. Um, but I thought I'd show you a couple of apps and a website that I use when I'm attempting to work out what the conditions are going to be like at a given location at a given time. And the first one is an app that's available on the phone. So this first app is called Meteo Earth or Meteo Earth and I'll go into it now. So what um, Meteo Earth or Meteo Earth gives me is a map. Now you can only zoom in so far. 
what I can do is I can look at things like the temperature and then I can either press the play button and just let it cycle through the time or I can manually scroll through and see what the temperature is like for the time period that's available on here. I can also look at precipitation and again I can scroll through and see if we're likely to be having rain, snow, sleet or anything else. The all-important cloud cover, I can see what that looks like all the way through and you can see we've got some thick cloud coming <laughs> and also important particularly if I'm photographing around lakes and still water and I want reflections is the wind so I can see what the wind looks like in terms of how much of it and what direction it's going in. The second one I'm going to look at again is an app on the phone and it's called Clear Outside. So what Clear Outside gives me is quite an extended time period and it gives me conditions hour by hour. So I can see the total cloud cover, I can see low cloud, this is percentages, I can see medium cloud and I can see high cloud. This is really important. Uh, if you've got a lot of low cloud, the chances of getting light through at sunrise and sunset is minimal. But if you've got high cloud and not a lot of medium cloud and no low cloud, that's when you've got the opportunity to get some really spectacular colours and light with the, the sun shining up and bottom lighting that high cloud. So I can scroll forward on this and have a look at you know, lots of different time periods and we've got some bad weather coming. It gives me things like visibility, it tells me if there's going to be rain, it gives me the wind uh, speed and it gives me the wind direction and it also gives me the temperature and for some reason it also tells me when the International Space Station is visible. <laughs> Not why I'd want that. And of course I'm looking at the moment at El Campeo but I can put in all sorts of locations on here and check the conditions for those locations. I can search for them and save them if I want to. The next one I want to show you is a website and it's called Skippy Sky. This is the European uh, version of Skippy Sky and there are other ones which I think cover a large part of the world. Um, and if I click on Spain and France it will give me a map for Spain and France. And what it's showing me there um, this is actually showing me total cloud cover percentage at 6 a.m. on Wednesday the 11th of September, which is when I'm actually making this video. <laughs> and what it's showing me is obviously the, the blue color cloud is sort of light cloud cover and the red is thick cloud cover, so it's the percentage. Uh, I can't zoom in on this. This is the view that you get, but if you know where you are, <laughs> and uh, I am kind of around uh, here somewhere, um, then I can get a good idea of how the weather looks in terms of cloud cover at this particular time. I can go forward, this is six o'clock in the morning as I said, I can, uh, and it's plus six hours. So let's say I go uh, plus 33 hours. That then gives me Thursday morning at nine o'clock. And again, I've got the cloud cover, and it looks like we've got lots of cloud. This is total cloud cover, but I can change this. I can look at low cloud. Lots of it. I can look at middle cloud. Eh, not so much. And I can look at high cloud. Quite a lot. Probably not a great time to be going out. And at the moment, we're actually on warnings for... Uh, uh, so like severe storm conditions and what they call the Gotafria here. Gotafria is, is a temperature drop or cold drop um, and we get really bad weather conditions when that happens, uh, flash floods, so probably not a good time to be out and about. The other factor that we need to consider in planning is the light. Now of course the weather affects the light which is why it's so important but also the direction of light, so the position of the sun 
which is what I'm normally shooting. I don't tend to do night shots where I'm relying on the moon or the stars to light the scene. Um, but the position of the sun, and that's often the position of the sunrise and the sunset, because I tend to do most of my shooting at that time of day, that's really important as well. And the main site that I tend to use uh, at home when I'm planning a trip is the photographer's ephemeris. So this is the photographer's ephemeris. It's the web version, which is free. There is a, um, an app for the phone, but you have to pay for that. So I'm not including that here. This is the free version available on the web. Now what this gives you is a map and um, you can put in um, a date up here. You can um, take a date and you can scroll forward by days, by weeks, or you can click on the little calendar here and you can pick whatever that you want. And you can put in a location. So at the moment, you know, I've got El Campeo, um, and this is the map for El Campeo. So just like on Google Maps, and I think it actually uses Google Maps in the background, you've got a map view, um, and you can have terrain turned on or off, and I'll talk about that in a second, uh, and you have a satellite view. And what you can do is drag this pin to a specific point. I'll pick there, just for the sake of argument. And it shows me the position or the direction of sunrise and sunset. And it also shows me the direction of moonrise and moonset. And I can kind of scroll through. So you know, on Tuesday, January the 7th, 2020, um, the direction of sunrise will be there and then the sun will progress around you can see that there it's put a, a gold ring around the area showing that it's kind of golden hour light you can scroll through the ring has disappeared now because we've gone past the golden hour and you can actually track the position of the sun all the way around until you get the golden hour at the other end of the day all the way through to sunset you can, of course, go in and you can search for you know, other locations and it will find them. So if I go here, um, if you've seen the videos that I do at uh, Quebec from Deloro Mountain, this is Quebec from Deloro Mountain, and I can see the position of sunrise and sunset on this particular date, or indeed on any date that I want. If I go into the map view, I obviously get a much bare bones scene, but if I put terrain on, I can see the terrain here. So I can see that the mount, this is all high terrain here, and lower terrain here with some ridges and other bits and pieces going on. Let's say you want to get a better idea of what the light on the scene might look like at a particular time of day. How is it going to be affected by those mountains and ridges and hills and, and other things? How can you get a view of the patterns of light and shadow as they move across the landscape? Well, there is a way to do it. And it's using a tool called Google Earth. Okay, so this is Google Earth. And as it says, it covers the Earth. Here's Spain and I can zoom in and I can zoom in I can zoom in by using the, the scroll on the mouse or by clicking the buttons here so here I am this is um, actually the, the some of the trails on Quebec Thon de Loro mountain which I visit quite a lot so if I keep on zooming in here zoom right in and get down to a real low level view here and basically I've got a ground level view and I can scroll around and look at that view and that's actually pretty accurate I mean the foreground uh, this area here doesn't look much like um, it would look at if you was actually standing there but the background certainly does but what's neat here is if I click on this little picture of a sun over 
horizon or whatever it is just here I can get this timeline slider now I can change the dates in this timeline to be whatever I want so what I can do is I can use this slider to show me so if I start off here this is quarter past four in the morning and I scroll forwards I can see as the sun starts to come up the way the light is likely to fall on the scene so you can see here by 8.50 the sun's pretty well up and most of the scene apart from the immediate foreground is illuminated the immediate foreground won't be illuminated because I'm standing with my back to a mountain but most of the background is so by that time of day it's probably too late to shoot but if I come back a bit earlier you can see we start to get shadows and definition in here because at this time of day we've not got full sun on the scene so that's going to be quite a nice time to be shooting out towards those mountains okay that's it a selection of apps and websites that i use to plan my landscape photography and they're all absolutely free i hope you've enjoyed this video found it interesting if you have please consider giving it a like or a share, or both. And of course, don't forget about that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Have you got some apps or websites that you use for planning that you'd like to share? And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So, thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.